prepared. Oh, but last day before leaving, so lots and lots of preparation. There's still lots of mess to be cleaned up. By this time, I'd been living in San Diego for almost 11 months. Though I had some time away, I was almost entirely here on Shelter Island. But the day had finally come, and it was time to leave the mooring ball for the last time. Just going into the airport, this time not actually to do anything with flying. I have to check out of the US for the boat here at the airport. So I'm going to be going to do that now. I've got a whole bunch of paperwork, everybody's passports, uh, boat documents, and we're off to get that done. After having all the paperwork in order, we left that afternoon for Ensenada. It was a nice overnight sail, well, actually motor, but we arrived to a gorgeous sunrise. Sailing into Ensenada on the morning of the 29th of October. Our first destination after San Diego. Once Lost Pearl was snug in her slip, it was actually the first time I'd ever gone into a marina with her. It was time for us to go see the port captain, immigration, and customs. It was also time for Dave, he's on the far right, to leave us and board the boat that he was going to be crewing for for the rest of the trip down to Cabo San Lucas. Then this guy shows up, again. It was fun to see my brother again, but this would be the last time that we'd see each other for quite some time. With all the paperwork out of the way, we could get sailing again and pointed the bow due south. This second leg of our trip was about 250 miles long as we made our way towards Cedros Island. This took a couple of days and nights, and during the night we would each take turns standing watch of about four hours each. Here Tim is just near the end of his watch as I have just gotten up in the morning. Tim wasted no time in doing something that he's been looking forward to in the cruising lifestyle. Fishing. Oh my gosh. That didn't take long. That's not that little. Or what's those stripes? No, we're that's eating not, this. That's, that's definitely, that's big enough. We're eating this baby. Do you need the gaff? Tim managed to land a nice skipjack tuna. He didn't waste much time. After I had filleted the first one, he already started going after the second. Oh yeah, this is a fish. You know how much work you're making for me here? <laughs> I promise, if, if we get this one on the boat, we won't fish anymore. This is too easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our first full day at sea. I don't feel it anymore. Oh yeah. He's not fighting very hard. I think he just jumped off. Yeah, he's gone. Thought so you said this was too easy. I think the lure's gone too. Uh oh. Oh well, we were all happy with one, and it sure tasted good. Well on our way to Cedros Island, we have already passed Ensenada. It took a while for the check-in process, but um, we spent uh, basically one day in Ensenada and then continued on. And uh, we've done now two overnights uh, along this passage in order to get us over here to Cedros Island, which you can just barely see in the gap there in the clouds. But we should be at uh, Cedros later today. It's just uh, early in the morning, 8 a.m. just throughout the night and hopefully we'll get to Cedros and have a nice afternoon. As we approached Isla Cedros, the skies cleared and the winds picked up and we had an absolutely gorgeous sail.
late introduction, but this is Tim and Gretchen. They own Felicita, which you saw in the intro of this video. They are going to be doing the same journey on their boat a year after I'm doing mine. I couldn't have asked for better crew. They were super organized, very helpful, pre-cooked a bunch of meals, and are just fabulous people to be with anyways. They are truly good friends. Here we are at our first island destination. We are at Isla Cedros by the village of El Moro. And we had uh, mostly motoring, but we did get some really good sailing in on the way in here. Uh, but this is a beautiful spot. We're gonna explore the town today. And then later on, we're going to start heading our way towards Magdalena Bay. Yeah. We set off from Isla Cedros in the late afternoon for our longest leg to come, a distance of around 300 miles to Bahia Magdalena. We were greeted by another gorgeous sunrise and a wonderful pod of dolphins. We had to time our entrance into the bay for a favorable tide and we actually arrived a bit too early so we had to do a couple of loop-de-loos out in the ocean. everyone good morning we are in Puerto Magdalena which is in the uh, Bahia Magdalena I wanted to stop here along the way because my mother's name is Magdalena so she used to go by Magda but yeah her full name is Magdalena Mariana so I definitely wanted to stop by here and see the place it's a beautiful little fishing village uh, it seems really sleepy but there's a lot of pangas going back and forth it seems to be there's a fair bit of fishing tourism going on here First thing in the morning, a whole bunch of pangas with uh, fishermen head out and I think there's dive tours as well out of here. Uh, San Carlos, I believe, is over that way. And I think people then maybe get ferried over here by panga in order to, uh, uh, to do some of those tours. There seem to be like small lodges and that on the island as well. Lost Pearl is just in the background there. This is our third stop in the Baja but feels like the first major one for me where this is kind of what I felt or imagined that cruising would be like. A uh, really sleepy little town, super hospitable people. We came ashore yesterday and at a little restaurant here behind us um, we stopped and, and had a few beers and realized after we'd already ordered that none of us had our wallets with us because we'd been uh, offshore for so long nobody had any there was no need to have a wallet in our pants. And he gave us the beers for anyways. We just promised we would come back today to do that, to, to pay it for him. He said, eh, no problem, this is Mexico. Uh, but yeah, it's a beautiful little spot. And this is gonna be great. The next uh, leg of our journey, we are going to be going to Cabo San Lucas. Should take us about 36 hours or so to sail. Uh, we're looking to do that by leaving uh, early Sunday, um, early Sunday morning, and then probably getting, um, getting there by Tuesday morning, something like that. We'll figure that out. But, or sorry, early Sunday morning, we should be there by Monday afternoon. That's it, that sounds better. Just taking a walk down Main Street. Right. 
take it, they do a lot of crab and lobster, I suspect. Having a lovely downwind sail. We're just uh, a day, a day and a half or so out of Cabo San Lucas. And we're just cruising along around, around five knots. We've had uh, several strikes on the uh, fishing line, but unfortunately nothing uh, hit. We've lost one lure. It was uh, probably a big fish and another one was uh, snapping after the line. So we definitely had some bites. I'm gonna need some new tackle though. The last leg was only 170 miles and we got some really good sailing in. Sunsets are always so magical on the boat and everyone just sits and watches, maybe getting a chance to see the fabled green flash. the mountains from the Cape. Los Cabos. The morning of our final day saw an absolutely stunning sunrise. And of course, more dolphins. That never gets old. On Tim and Gretchen's YouTube channel, GT Sailing, they have a two part episode on this trip as well. I highly recommend going over and seeing their version of events. years ago in November of 1981 on a tall ship I sailed down to here down to Cabo San Lucas so this is uh, my first time here in 40 years Woo! first swim off the boat welcome to Cabo oh so refreshing such a wonderful trip with these two and I'm really looking forward to seeing them in the Sea of Cortez. Adios amigos. It was really a lot of fun while we were here in Cabo San Lucas. Uh, I stayed a little bit longer than I wanted but the Bajaja showed up and there were so many cruisers around it was crazy how busy the Anchorage area got. So it was uh, a lot of fun. There was a good party last night as well at uh, Squid Row. A pretty pretty raucous bar here inside Cabo San Lucas but uh, I think it's time to get more into the cruising lifestyle and look for quiet bays and go for little afternoon swims and siestas that kind of thing as you can tell my voice is a little bit off from uh, all the shouting at a bar last night so I have a really good radio voice talk to you later